Hey everyone, and welcome to another Photoshop CC tutorial. This is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and today I'm going to be teaching you about the curves adjustment layer and how you can use that to increase the contrast in your images. So let's go ahead and jump right in. You can see my already finished image here for the most part, which is just a easily done composite of two photos, a background plus a model. Uh, you can see that I actually have a clipping mask over our model, and we'll get into that, but I just want to toggle on and off of these really quickly so that you can kind of see what's been done here. So you can see that makes a big difference in um, the overall contrast value of our model and blends it into our scenery a little better. And you can see what happens when we take that off. And as for our background, you can see that that makes a huge difference between that, which it's a great photo, but it's a little blown out, and this just makes it a whole lot better. So um, I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I did, and then we'll also recreate this uh, from scratch as far as the curves adjustment layers. So when you actually click on your curves, you'll get a panel like this, which is the properties panel. If you're using um, Photoshop CS5 or higher, this is the panel you'll get. If not, you'll get something similar in earlier versions of Photoshop that still have curves. I believe this feature goes back to at least CS2 but I'm absolutely certain that it's in CS3. Even if it's not in the properties panel, you can still bring this up with the curves adjustments. So um, when you go to the top here, this is the brightest area um, of the image in that value, and this is the darker image. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and bring this back up to um, kind of our flat line, and you can see you know, what that does. This is more or less where the original was. So when I create this plot point here and I bring this down, you can see that the image gets darker. If I were to bring it up, it gets lighter in that bottom area of the image. So you can see how that balances it out and you can kind of use the histogram here somewhat as a guide when you're adjusting this. So you can see what happens there. When I do this, top part of the image gets brighter. So again, you can see how adjusting with curves works and what the value of it is when you're talking about creating contrast in your images. So if I go to auto, it does this. And I'm not sure where it came up with these values, but that's okay as a starting point because I can just manually bring down the points as I need to. Now you can create additional points by just clicking on it and that will create a point and then you can drag it to where you want. But you can also just drag the point off and it'll go away. So that's how I affect our background here as far as the curves adjustment. With regard to our model, I did um, a couple of things here. You can see the curve that I made here, and let's just see kind of how this affects this. You can see that the photo is starting to look very flat as we do that. And if we were to bump it up here, okay, the lights pop out there, and that's a good look, but it's not blending nearly as well as we'd like with the rest of our image. So if I bring it down and I create the darks, you can see that that's looking a bit overcooked. So creating that kind of S-curve isn't gonna work for this particular image. So I'm gonna bring that down a bit, and I'm going to adjust like this and deal with the darks so that we kind of balance it out and it matches the overall tonal value of our complete image a bit more. Now if I wanted to adjust and blend these together even better, I can go ahead and I can do another curves adjustment layer by selecting that out of the adjustment layers panel here, or I could go over to layers and then I could go to my, <clears throat> excuse me, I go to layers and I can go ahead and I can create a new adjustment layer over here. Sorry, my trackpad isn't uh, working very well right now. And I could just select curves and that would do the same thing. So th there's all kinds of ways you can go ahead and create curves. But now that I have this over our general image, I can go ahead and make the entire image lighter like that or I can make the entire image darker like that. And because this adjustment layer is above all the others, you can see that it's giving me control here. So when I take this off, it does this. And when it does, I do that. In, in general, adjustment layers are a great tool in Photoshop. And we're focusing on the curves at this point. But I just want to um, you know, 
show you something really quick um, that you can do with an image like this. Uh, you've probably seen this type of treatment before in um, images, whether I've done them or someone else has, but you can adjust the blend mode there and that will produce a different effect, give you some color and you can shift um, how much of that you want to bring into it and you can just get a different look out of it. So that's just, again, um, just a quick tip. It has nothing to do with the curves, but I did want to show you that just because it's something cool and it will add more value to your images. And it only took me about 30 seconds to cover that and we've made the image look a lot better. But anyway, let's go back to curves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these curves that we already have going on. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to delete these adjustment layers. Um, not the mask on them, I'm sorry. There's do this and that release clipping mask and we'll get rid of that one and we'll just check off our gradient map alright so you can see the uh, regular composite here with just the model masked out over the background. Both of these are SNART objects just so that we can work non-destructively. That's the other great thing about adjustment layers is they give you the ability to work non-destructively and you can adjust them as needed, take things off, take things all on. Um, you know, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our background because this is washed out and we want to just give this a lot more contrast. And so we're gonna start here. You can see that we don't have any plot points at all. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go here, because if I go all the way, you see that I start to lose details. You don't want to do flat lines, because that's going to make something too dark. It's going to underexpose it, or if you go you know, too much in this direction, it'll overexpose it. So we want to stick to keeping our curves actual curves. We don't want flat lines. Uh, that defeats the entire point, and that's why it's called curves and not flats. Ha, ha, ha. So uh, this seems to be dark enough to add that contrast value and richness without us losing any details. So um, I think that's actually looking pretty good. We don't need to go up here. We'll go um, a little down here. We don't want to do too much because it's going to start inverting the color. You don't want to do that. So we'll just kind of balance things out as best as we can. And to see what looks good. This is um, more of an art than a science. So, you know, just kind of play with a little and see what you want to keep, what you are okay with losing in terms of detail, what you can bring out. And the other beautiful thing about curves, just in general, is that you can use mask with them. And if you don't like the way that part of the um, image is being affected, you can take a look at it, toggle it off, and then you can decide to affect it with mask. Which we covered in a previous tutorial how mask works, and remember that white reveals and black conceals. And you can do all kinds of things with your mask here, and you can affect that on your adjustment layers in general. Not just curves, but any adjustment layer that you have. So this is looking um, pretty decent overall. So let's make another curves adjustment layer just for our model. Now I want to show you something. There's a couple of ways we could do this. We could actually duplicate the mask that we have here by clicking this mask. And you could actually hold down the um, Alt key, drag this up to the Curves Adjustment Mask, click Replace Mask, and now your curves would be mapped only onto the mask of your model, which is pretty cool. And that's one way to um, handle this. However, there is another way, the way that I used uh, previously. So we're going to um, go ahead and just delete this altogether. We're going to add a new curves adjustment layer. And instead of uh, using a mask that way, we're just going to go ahead and create a clipping mask that are a bonds to the visible pixels in our image. So we'll do that, and then we'll make our adjustments, and you can see that it has overall the same effect. 
this is just a matter of preference in how you want to work non-destructively. And um, the reason that I prefer to use the clipping mask in this case is if we decide to alter the mask for that model, we'd have to go through the process again. If we just do a clipping mask, then we won't have to do our work twice. It won't have to be repetitive, and we're good to go. So from a workflow standpoint, that just makes more sense. So you can see what I've done here. I've um, you know increased the contrast here, made this darker in our model, and... I don't want to bump it up because you'll see it get too blown out over there. So I'm just going to do, this looks good. That's still rich and that looks nice. So we're about where we were when we started. Now I'm just going to create an overall curves layer and blend everything together just a little more. And I didn't do a lot. It was very subtle. Because if I go too far, it creates this whole silhouette thing, and I don't like how that looks. If I do this, it's a little blown out. It's not terrible. It's brighter. You know, maybe this is the look I want. Maybe this is more the look I want. You know, I, I have the option. And, you know, that doesn't look bad, but this doesn't look bad either. Uh, that's not terrible. And let's just go ahead and toggle that so we can see how that looks. Okay. And with our effect, I kind of like that. Now, here's something else that's interesting that you can do. With the curves in general, you have your three additive color values, red, green, and blue. You can select the individual channels and you can actually alter the individual channels to get different effects. As you can see by doing this, I'm reducing the presence of red throughout this image. And you can see the effect it causes. I don't like that. I can increase the value of red throughout this image. And it does that. That doesn't work for what I'm trying to do here. This is about where we were, but if I pull it back, it cools down the image considerably and it creates kind of a, a more balanced overall image so that's kind of cool so maybe that's what I'm looking for but let's say I've done that and I want to cool the image down even more I can add to the blue value here by doing this um, or I can decrease the blue values and give it a little bit of more of a gold feel this or by moving here and then using this point over here I can create more of a blue value toward the bottom and I can affect it in this way or I can do the opposite give it the gold wash on the bottom there balance that out that way you know so there's all kinds of interesting creative ways that you can use curves just besides creating general contrast you can use it to adjust the overall color balance throughout an image as well and I've primarily messed with the uh, the blue and the red here but again with the green there are some things you can do here as well and you see the effect that this has but ultimately the thing that I find has the most overall effect on the image I usually work within the uh, red and blues myself but that's a matter of your personal preference and you can adjust it to create whatever look you need and again this is more art than science there's not a right or a wrong in handling curves unless it's not producing the results that you want so um, you know don't necessarily let anybody else tell you um, differently and again these curves adjustments that we've made all stack and you know taking away or adding to them creates different various results as you can see so the curves adjustments that we've made throughout this all contribute to the final impact of the image and even if I take off you know our gradient map here you can see what that's looking like purely with the curves 
um, I add this back in because I think it just uh, creates an overall better image and that's what I would do in terms of producing and using this as the basis for something I was going to do maybe I'm doing um, a banner ad for a performance or an open mic night or what have you um, so this is how I would approach developing something like that in terms of taking images that overall were great photographs by themselves that just didn't balance well together or were too blown out or I didn't like the contrast or the lack thereof in them and this is how I would adjust them using the curves and you can see how adding these curves adjustment layers and our gradient map made a huge impact on this image we've made something you know new and dynamic with just these two photographs together you can use this on any finished photograph and get a better overall result and again, this is just another way to handle adjusting contrast and color values in an image without necessarily using camera raw. And it's another way to use um, contrast in an image without resorting to the levels adjustment layer that I covered in my other tutorial. So again, this is just a walkthrough of some ways that I think you can use the curves to um, again create more dynamic more compelling images it's a basic walkthrough on the function of curves for those of you who have never used in Photoshop this is a great way to improve your image and your compositioning and just take things to another level alright well I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial uh, like this video if you liked it don't forget to subscribe share uh, post on various different social media and don't forget I do new Photoshop CC tutorial videos every Thursday so stay tuned for those let me know if you guys would like to see a different tutorial uh, in the comments just something I haven't done before and don't forget now uh, YouTube comments are using Google Plus so don't forget to share that way as well and I guess I'll see you guys on the next Photoshop CC tutorial thanks for watching